Justin, hey, thank you for getting these to me and uh, welcome officially to your first video review. Yeah, this is it's about nine o'clock at night on a Sunday. Baby is sleeping with mama and this is usually the time of day that I, I knock out all my videos because it's quiet and uh, usually I've had a nice relax, well, not relaxing, but usually a slower paced day. Uh, I'm going to take a look at your bench press, then we're going to look at your squat, and then your deadlift. And for your deadlift, I'm going to show you two pictures uh, after I review your video. So let's start with your bench press, which I want to comment. Oh yeah, let me backtrack just a little bit. Watch to your setup, man. I'm very pleased. I like the checking of the hands. Your spacing looked excellent. And here's why. Okay, so with, with the setup, the only thing I didn't notice um, that I like would like to see, and this isn't a huge deal, is right before you unrack the bar, there should be a little bit of a, uh, we talk about leg drive, so a, a pushing through your feet. So you're trying to push your feet, your toes, through your shoes and uh, using that force to kind of cinch up your back. So I should see a tad bit of movement kind of in your upper body. And, and when I say movement, I'm not talking about shakiness. I'm talking about like really emphasizing that arch. So you're taking your feet, you're trying to push your toes through your shoes after you've set like a nice high arch and all you're doing is preventing or is creating a little bit more friction between your feet and your back. So hopefully that makes sense in I didn't see anything that concerned me as like, oh man, he needs to start doing this now. But it's just a little extra step that I like to see done when setting up for the bench press to help reinforce the arch and keep everything tight. Now let's take a look. Wrists look pretty good. All right, what am I gonna say about that? One, you had your mask on. Two, you took a breath in between. Now I get like, you don't have a lift off. Um, and I, man, I would just encourage you to um, ask someone in the gym for a lift off. Uh, and then always, always, always check your weights when you're lifting alone, because look at that spacing right there. It's not too much, but uh, if that starts to exaggerate a little bit, that could turn into bad things, so we don't want that. Good touch point. I don't see any compression of your chest. I'm watching your wrist angle. That's pretty darn good. Elbows do appear to be in front of your forearms. Bar speed is looking good going up and down. And man, you really do look like you're tucking your elbows. Okay, so this... This angle is good for a lot of reasons, but uh, I can't really tell what your touch point is. So I usually, in most lifts, I like a 45 degree oblique angle. So take a look at your you know, right or left side oblique, and that is where I want you to kind of position the camera, squatting, deadlifting, bench pressing, unless I tell you otherwise. So next time where that camera would be, is pointing maybe at your right oblique at about a 45 degree angle. And so that angle kind of opens up things a little bit more for me. Let's go ahead and take a look at your squat. Stance looks good. So what did I see right there? Step, step. Okay. What am I going to say? We should have been tight and you should have taken your breath in the rack before you stepped it out. And this next thing that I'm gonna address, it, it's really gonna play an effect in your deadlift. Watch what happens when you breathe in as you unrack that bar. All right, All right. so what did we see there? We saw shrug up. When you breathe, we want to breathe into that diaphragm and that tightness should be all throughout the torso. When we take in air, we don't wanna 
that's not getting us tight. That's just getting some quick bit of oxygen. And those short, kind of elevated, shallow breaths are actually a stress response. And we want you to kind of remain as, excuse me, as relaxed as possible. Now, I mean, don't hear me say be relaxed, but we we want to minimize uh, extra components and that that shallow, that kind of stress breathing that elevates the shoulders, we don't want that. So breathe into the diaphragm. And again, you should have had that breath as you're getting under the rack. As soon as you get tight, you feel your shoulders are in a good position and you're ready to walk that out. Brace against that bar, stand it up, hold that breath, step back, step back, boom, first rep. Now, speaking of your first rep, ooh, what do we have there? So I, I think what's happening, so again, um, this angle, because it's kind of more um, straight on, I can't really see what's happening with your back and what's happening with your tailbone. So I don't know if there's a little bit of anterior tilt happening. I don't know if there's a little bit of loss of tension on the upper back. But the thing that I do see is, I'm going to back up a little bit, watch your head. Okay, so this... Jerky movement, head comes down, I finish, head comes up. And all that's really doing is, again, adding some stress here to the neck and potentially causing you to lose tension in that barbell. So why might that be causing your knee slide? So if there's kind of this sudden jerk of your chin coming up, it might be causing you to get on your toes a bit which is causing those knees to slide at the bottom. All right, very noticeable that time. I think there was one rep that you didn't do that. Very noticeable again. All right, didn't do it that time. Real hard that time. Now that, so with all that said, so my, my coaching point with this would be deep breath, keep the eyes on the floor, no movement of the neck, almost like you have a ball in your neck and you're keeping it there the whole time. So if you move your neck at all, you lose the ball. Those would be my focus points. And then I would just say, give me a 45 degree angle um, so that I can see. So 45 degree angle, um, how would I describe that? Quartering, quartering away from you. I think that's the correct terminology. Hunting terms. I've only done it once, so uh, not quite an expert. So quartering away. So the 45 degree angle is away from you. And that should allow me to see your back to make sure you're maintaining that tightness. And so that knee slide, I, I think it's a product maybe of the excessive neck movement, the lack of tension in the deep breathing. And it could also just be, honestly, man, you're stressed, uh, you're not sleeping well, you're probably not eating enough, you've lost weight. Um, and after I watch your deadlift, I'm going to give you a few comments and thoughts about maybe programming going forward. So let's take a look at your deadlift. Yeah, dude, solid, solid setup. So actually, um, I'm just going to point something out. Okay. Rep one, rep two. What do we notice? Hips are higher, chest is lower, shoulders are more forward of the bar. All right. Now let's whoop, watch your deadlift and let's see how you get from one to five. Good drag right there. Excellent job. All right. Pretty good drag there. All right. Back angle, slowly losing it. Okay, so right there. What happened right there? Let's slow that down a bit. I can't slow it down. There it is. Okay, so couple things 
Uh, watch, watch yourself take a breath. Okay, so where's? Okay, bring the bar down. Okay, again, where's your chin? Noticeable, and then. See how you also, you you rocked a little bit, so there's a bit of weight shifting happening, and what did I just see right there? And where did those shoulders go? Shrugged, hey? All you really did there, shallow breath, and because it wasn't deep in the diaphragm, watch what happens to your back. We lose it. Okay, compared to good heart extension, nice job, keeping it close. So two, th so yeah, I've said a lot of things. Let me uh, recap. Generally speaking, the big thing to work on is breathing into the diaphragm keeping your chin down, all right? We do that, I think we're in a much better position, all right? Secondary to that is um, your, mm, actually, I'm not even gonna give you that to start thinking about, because I, I really, what I want you to do is focus on chin down, eyes on the floor, and breathing into the diaphragm. Get that right, and I think that will clean up a lot of things. And if that gets cleaned up, these other things that I'm seeing about shoulder position, midfoot issues, they are going to be a lot easier to clean up because I don't have to worry about how you're breathing. Uh, and so then lastly, what I'll mention to you um, is, man, I know it's it's been very stressful. You get a lot of transition happening in, you know, just things that are going on in your life. And I know I've been a big advocate about three days a week and I um, I do think that could still be good, but I think maybe first of the year, what we do is um, maybe we give you like a week off. So when you're um, up at home with your family, man, we just, you know, hit the gym, do what you want, relax. Like, you know, don't worry about trying to add weight to the bar. And then when you're ready to come back and start getting after it, we're going to squat three days a week. You're going to do some sort of pressing motion three days a week, and you're going to deadlift one set of five three days a week. And we're really just going to hammer form, and I'm going to deload you a lot. And what that's going to do is it's, it's going to elevate the stress of focusing on technique, but I think it's also going to decrease the physical stress of heavy weight. And so it's going to allow you to really focus on technique again. And, you know, coming to the gym can hopefully be enjoyable. Um, you know, you're not worried about lifting too heavy of weight. Uh, so and we can chat a little bit more about that when I see you this week, but uh, just something to maybe consider. Uh, I really think you, you do have what it takes to uh, take a linear progression very far and then into intermediate program. Uh, and I, I think at least for deadlift men, uh, 350, 375 is probably easily in your future next year. Um, 405 for squat. Man, I mean, just your squat is so good when you're on. I think 405, man, maybe even by the end of next year, could be possible if we are consistent. And, and if it's not there, um, you, I would imagine you're pretty darn close if you've been consistent. Um, and man, to, I think 225, man, that's going to be in the rear view mirror for you for bench press. If we can be consistent with a linear progression and then entering into intermediate program, focusing on these lifts. So those are my thoughts. Um, yeah, I, I hope this was good for you, man. I, I hope, uh, Hope this weekend's been relaxing for you, and I will see you on Tuesday.